Hi, so for today, we are going to talk about our continue our discussion about uh, chain rule by derivatives of polynomial function. And last video, we have stopped with number uh, seven. So unfortunately, it was cut because of some of technical problems. Okay, and we're going to continue this topic for today. So for number eight, we have... Uh, y equals square root of 2ax minus x squared. So the very first thing we're going to do here is to simply convert the radical into exponential. So you have 2ax minus x squared raised to 1 half. Then get the derivative, and the derivative of that would be y prime. We have 1 half 2ax minus x squared. Of course, following the rule, power rule, we have... 1 half minus 1. And then, of course, don't forget to differentiate whatever is inside this radical. Okay? So, treating A as constant also, we know that that would be 1 half 2ax minus x squared. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then, differentiate with respect to x this. So, A will be considered as constant. So the derivative of it, 2ax will be simply 2a and x squared would be 2x. So that uh, we can simplify it as this, 2a minus 2x all over 2. Then you have 2ax minus x squared raised to negative 1 half. So we know that in the numerator, we can factor out 2 so that we have a minus x all over 2. So the 2s will cancel. Now you have 2ax minus x squared raised to negative 1 half. So, and that will be the answer. We have a minus x, 2ax minus x squared raised to negative 1 half. Or, if we wish to eliminate the negative uh, exponent, we simply get the reciprocal okay, of that. So you have a minus x all over 2ax minus x squared raised to 1 half. Okay, that will be our final answer for number 8. Okay, and so for number 9, we have uh, y equals x squared. Then we have x plus 1 cubed. So this will employ a product rule as well as chain rule. So we know that the product rule is udv plus vdu. So treating this as uh, u and treating this as v, we know that that is u dv plus v du for the product rule. All right. All right. So get the y prime. So the first thing to do here is u and get the derivative of v. Plus we have v x plus 1. And then the derivative of u, which is x squared. Okay. So do it. So we have x squared. This is chain rule. So you have 3 x plus 1 t raised minus 1 raised to 3 minus 1. Of course, you have to get the derivative of the inside function. Okay. This one. Plus you have x plus 1 and then the derivative of x squared is 2x. So right now, you have this as x squared times 3, then we have x plus 1 squared, and then 1. The derivative of x plus 1 is 1. Plus we have uh, 2x times x plus 1. Okay? So what are we going to do with uh, this one? Well, of course, this, this should be cube, of course. I forgot the cube here, so it should be cube, cube. So if you're going to do this, we have 3x squared x plus 1 squared plus 2x times x plus 1 cubed. Okay, so we can see that x plus 1 is common to both of the terms. So we can factor out x plus 1 squared so that now we have 3x squared okay, plus we have 2x times x plus 1. Okay, so we can factor it out. Of course, uh, there's also a common factor of x. 
we can still factor out x so that it becomes x times x plus 1 squared so that we have 3x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay? So we can also factor out our answer like that. Okay, that is for number 9. By the way, we will only solve, uh, I think, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4 problems in here. Okay? And this video is just a continuation of the first video. And I hope you already watched the first video. Okay? So, and for number 10, we have y equals 3 all over, okay, that we have... Uh, 16 plus x raised to 4. All right, 16 plus x raised to 4. So we know that uh, if we do this, okay, raised to 4, we know that if we do this, we can have a uh, uh, quotient, okay? We will be obeying the quotient rule in here. So that's why we can um, recall, okay, the quotient rule is copy the low and differentiate the high, which means the numerator. Low the high minus high, copy the numerator, differentiate the low or the denominator or over low squared. So high the, low the high minus high the low all over low squared. So again, the low is 16 plus x raised to 4. That's the denominator. Then we're going to differentiate the high, which is the numerator, minus high, which is 3, and then differentiate the low, which is 16 plus x raised to 4. And all over, we have low squared. That is to square the denominator in here. Okay. So pretty much easy, the, de the derivative of 3 is 0. So we have y prime. So this term technically would be 0, okay? Because it's multiplied to 0. So that would be 0 minus 3. And then a 0 plus 4x cubed, the derivative of uh, x raised to 4. Or uh, 16 plus x raised to 4. So this would be negative 12x raised to cube all over what we have 16 plus x raised to 4, okay, squared. So that will be our final answer for this problem. So simply it is the quotient rule, okay? So we have here the quotient rule. For number 11 and for our last problem, okay? So we have number 11 here. So you have y equals uh, x multiplied by x squared plus a squared raised to negative 1 half. Of course, if we wish to get the y prime, that means the dy all over dx. Okay. So what we are concerned about here is that we are only concerned with the variable x. And then we are going to treat a as constant because we are differentiating with respect to x in x. So what happens here is that we have a product rule. Again, this would be our u. This would be our v. Okay? So u dv, u, okay, u dv plus v du. So you copy the u and differentiate with respect to x dv. Plus, copy the v and differentiate with respect to x du, which is x. Right? So what are we going to do here is that we have x raised to negative 1 half, okay, or multiplied by negative 1 half. We have x squared plus a squared, negative 1 half minus 1. And then we are going to differentiate the inside with respect to x. Plus, we have x squared plus a squared raised to negative 1 half. This is that term. Okay. And of course, the derivative of x is simply 1. So simplify, we have negative 1 half of x 
Then you have x squared plus a squared. Negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 halves. Okay, and the derivative of this with respect to x is 2x. Simply 2x. Because the derivative of a squared is, since a is a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. So that's why we have x squared plus a squared raised to negative 1 half. All right? So, you know, the twos will cancel here. Okay. So that you are left with uh, negative. Okay. Negative x squared, x squared plus a squared raised to negative 3 halves plus x squared plus a squared raised to negative 1 half. Okay. So actually, we can, we can factor out the negative 1 half there. If we wish to. So that if we do that, we'll be having x squared plus a squared raised to negative one half. And then we have negative x squared. Okay. All over, I'm going to put this below. So since I put this below, this becomes three halves. But since I already factor out one half here, negative one half, so I'll be having what? Simply x squared plus a squared here, which is one. Because if you distribute this, it will result to this by loss of exponent. So we can factor it out. Okay, so negative one half minus one, that would be the answer. Okay, and then plus one, since I factored out this whole. Okay. So as you can see here, if we're going to simplify this, we have x squared plus a squared raised to negative 1 half. If I cross multiply this with 1, so you have negative x squared plus x squared plus a squared all over x squared plus a squared. Okay, So you can see this will cancel. Okay, So all you have is simply a squared. So you have x squared plus a squared raised to negative one half, and then you have a squared all over x squared plus a squared here. Okay, so you can still further simplify this. I'm just going to write this here. Okay, you can still further simplify this and this. Okay, so what will happen here? Okay. We have negative one half. We can simplify this. This is raised to one. So we know that this is divided. So negative one half minus one would be x squared plus a squared raised to negative three halves by loss of exponents. And then we have a squared in here. So this will be our final answer for this problem. So again, if you if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and share my channel. And for more differential calculus videos, integral, differential equations, everything about math, feel free to subscribe to my channel and make sure that you watch it all and share with it with your friends. Again, this is Injira Abad. Thank you so much for listening and God bless.